welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm always so happy to come into your home and share with you what's going on here throughout Central Florida and beyond because Bay Focus now uh, not only is targeted to Tampa Bay area, but you can watch Bay Focus anywhere around the country now, watch it on, on YouTube, watch us live streaming. And so we have many, many um, opportunities for you to be able to watch the show and share it with family around the country. And this is one of the ones today you want to do that because we are going to really talk about missions today and how a church here in Central Florida in the Tampa Bay area uh, decided to go beyond their walls and to build a church uh, outside of this area and go into Guatemala. So this is a missions themed program today. So you call somebody and have them watch. And we are, we are really excited to share with you today what's going to be going because we, we have Pathways Community Church back with us. And uh, we're going to introduce the pastor to him again. It's been a while since we've had them on. And also we have the pastor with us at, uh, with their sister church that they planted in Guatemala, Iglesia Evangelica del Camino. <laughs> If I could say that, if I could say that correct, um, and I am not going to attempt to pronounce the name of the uh, actual city area there in Guatemala. That is in La Antigua, Guatemala. La Antigua, La Antigua. Okay, La that's Antigua, La Antigua. But there's not to be confused with Antigua in in the Caribbean, Barbados area. Oh, okay, area. La Antigua. Yeah, yeah. That's not the one. There was another really difficult pronunciation. I can't remember where I read it in some of your material, but I'll, I'm going to give you a shot at it if I can find it. But let me introduce you both of my guests here, right, right who's been talking right next to me is pastor, the lead pastor of the um, church in Guatemala is Michael Watkins. And then right next to you is the senior and lead pastor of Pathways Community Church in Largo, Florida, not that tough of a city to pronounce, uh, <laughs> but Pastor Bill Losasso, and you've been on with us in the show in the past year. We're so privileged to have you back. And, and um, Pastor um, Losasso, I want to start with you because you had the vision here uh, to go, and when we've had you on in the past, for those of our viewers that may be um, new to Bay Focus, uh, Pathways has done a lot of different things over the years. Tell us a little bit about the church because you even had different congregations going, different um, trying to do a multicultural thing, and mm -hmm. but you have a, you've had a heart for getting out of the wall. So tell us about the church and, and why you wanted to go to Guatemala. You bet. Basically our church is for prostitutes, addicts, homeless, okay. convicts, trafficking victims, and the healthy people who want to help. And in, so we've started about six campuses doing that, including one in Guatemala. But it's far too much credit to say we wanted to do that. What happened was I felt so led to start a Hispanic church. It was clear from God. We had a missionary couple in Guatemala City at the university. They were just helping students. They weren't even church planters. And I called them and said, you, we have to start a Hispanic church. Come on home. And he said to me, I am home. Let's start the church in Guatemala. And we went down there, just clearly the Lord led it. I couldn't even spell Guatemala. And there we were, and, <laughs> and we found a 200-year-old building to rent. And I'll tell you, darling, we, we had hoped to get one day 35 people there because that's what it would fit and do some ministries. Then that fellow and his family came back home and Pastor Mike took over. What you're gonna see today is so far from 35 people, so far from my dream. Yeah. It is so much better than the vision I ever had. Wow. And you know, everything's based on the person leading the charge, but that is the difference. Mike has just transformed that place several times without my permission, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless. So I'd have been happy with 35 people and a little bit of ministry and, and what you're gonna see is amazing. Yeah, and I, and I wanna tell our viewers, stay tuned, because we're gonna be showing you some pictures and video and what's going on there. But okay, so what I'm, what I'm seeing here as pastor is you started this work, you, you, you put some invested in it, and then um, Pastor um, Watkins, you were already on staff. Of my, you, had a, you came from a background, you and, and I wanna give your wife credit too, because you guys have been in ministry for, for many years as a family. Uh, um, for, and for the life, lifespan of our marriage today, right. we, we've been I, that, actively that is, involved in ministry. That's a, that is really an, um, a milestone too. And, and how, number one, how did you get in your ministry, get connected with Pathways, and then how'd you end up in Guatemala? Well, how I got connected with Pathways, uh, in the mid 90s, uh, we had moved back. I was a vocationally trained youth director, but I had hit a point of burnout, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, we moved back to the Bay Area where I'd grown up here and came back with nothing, to nothing, for nothing. And uh, after visiting our old haunts, 
to get plugged back into a church, none of them worked, none of them felt right. We tripped mm -hmm. across pathways. And I came into pathways literally broken, uh, emotionally and spiritually highly mm -hmm. frustrated for multiple reasons, too long to get into today. And I found some spiritual and emotional healing at Pathways. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the grace of God, the church needed some of my skills, my talents, yeah. and I became a full-time staff member yeah. and uh, was around for the better part of eight years, I think, uh, worship leader and technical ministries director for the church. Yeah. And the opportunity presented itself that the church in Guatemala needed some leadership, and I heard from God, you're going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my wife signed on with that as well because she heard from God, we're going. and. And when it came time to make the transition, we were there, we were ready, simply because we were obedient and said yes. Did you have to learn the language and everything? Or did Absolutely. You already have, yeah. I, um, the first time we were down there was Christmas of 04, and we were plebes on a mission trip. You know, with my technical background, I was there to set up a computer lab. That was it. Well, yeah. actually, a computer for the previous couple that was there. And we were standing on the roof of their mission going, you know, we could do this, but you know, we're looking off in the horizon. We, we, we could do this, but you know what? We don't speak the language. There's already leadership yeah. in play here. And besides that, we're too important to our jobs right now. And, uh, and it's been really funny to watch how God took that and yeah. smacked us upside the head with it and yeah. put us there. Well, the fruit, the fruit speaks for that. When God, I, I love this saying, I have it written everywhere, God blesses what he authorizes. And when he authorized you to make this move, and now the blessing has come out, that God, God is duplicating this. All right, we need, to tell, we need to tell our viewers what is happening in Guatemala. Tell us about the church and, and some of the outreach ministry. Okay, well, the church, if you were to walk in, face value of the church on Sunday morning, you would see much like you would see as a church here. We are a church, average attendance now is nominally 300 persons a week. Uh, it, it's a mix split between... Uh, I generally say gringo and chapin, in other words, North Americans and nationals. Mm -hmm. um, at any given time of the year, it's a little bit of a split, 40-60. But uh, we have children's ministries, uh, senior, uh, well, not senior, but uh, adult men and women Bible studies. We have a Celebrate Recovery program. Mm -hmm. We have outreach directly, directly involved with the National Police of Guatemala. Uh, we, we, we have a feeding center that uh, touches nominally a thousand children a month mm -hmm. uh, through the course of the month in nutrition, food, clothing, uh, and telling the Word of God and teaching s stories there. Um, this is a... That's the short list. That, that is that alone, that, that many different areas takes an enormous oh, amount. Our house building. Our, well, our, yeah. Our, our, our house yeah. building outreach. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I and we're going to end that one. You know what? Let's, let's show some pictures and you can expound a little bit more on it. Let's, let's okay. take a look at the ministry in Guatemala here. Can you tell us what we're seeing with the pictures? Right here is the culmination of our outreach to the National Police that directly connects with our Celebrate Recovery program. This is part of our training. Uh, that we provide that we provided back in this last February, 300 men and women of the National Police Force of Guatemala, according to the BBC, the most dangerous police force in Central America, and these men are praying in small groups for each other. Wow. Uh, we have been blessed to host breakfasts and in inspirational times and preach positive values to the men and teach te te teach them. This is one of our breakfast times in our main sanctuary. Uh, we've been privileged to help with the distribution of nearly 25,000 New Testaments to the National Police of Guatemala, and this is one of the stations that we were delivering, and they're actually holding up the New Testaments in their hands. These are two of our other pastors that we've trained and ordained on the extreme left, or, well, is myself, and the opposite of myself is Giovanni, and the gentleman in the middle is Antonio Sandoval. Antonio is the pastor to the National Police. Giovanni is our Celebrate Recovery pastor. This is a great day for us. This was our 10-year ministry celebration. Wow. Uh, Sunday morning unified service. We, we had nominally 400 persons attending that particular day. And uh, Giovanni doing what I love us doing, and that is baptizing. We've seen nearly 150 souls baptized in the last seven years. This is the dedication day of our feeding center in Santa Maria de Jesus. 
It's a community, as the crow flies, about seven, seven and a half miles from Antigua proper. And uh, this is where we are feeding children. We are providing medical services. We're providing food and clothing services, and most importantly, teaching the Word of God. And this is them doing one of their own baptism services. That day, 35 children made professions of faith through baptism. A key element is that the kids understand what it is to have clean hands and clean hearts. And this picture just really depicts what that story is. This is one of the 19 hand washing stations that we have in the center. This is part of our home building. And uh, as we're gonna be talking about the Mill Casas project, this is the architectural skeleton design for the Mill Casas home. This is an actual assembly for the homes that we've been building over the last two years. We've been, we took some time to get the house right. And uh, this is one of our volunteer teams that come in and help build the home. This is a great footprint that shows what the home looks like and uh, how, how large it actually is. Combining our water filtration distribution along with the national police training programs that we have, we, we've had donations to provide the stations with clean water so the men can uh, be healthier. This is a before and after. What that's our amazing. That's what our filter will do. And I love that this filter comes out of the Tampa Bay area and we import it to, to Guatemala. And this is a group of 16 families that were able to receive a water filter unit in the mountains of Guatemala. Oh, that, that, that is, that's incredible, just the breadth of what you do there. Now you mentioned that, uh, let's, let's show the video of this too and you just tell us what we're seeing. We saw a little bit of it there. It's kind of a fast motion here, the Mil Casas oh, yeah, project. Oh yeah, the Mil Casas. We uh, set out to design a home that could be built quickly, simply, and would provide a clean, dry, securable place that the family could be happy in. And uh, this is one of our teams that uh, was building the home. This the, over the course of the day, the homes actually assemble in five hours. They simply screw together and uh, the various frames, you put the paneling on the side, put the roof on top and you're done. Yeah, that's just, that's amazing. That, that is, that's to me one of the most powerful things that you are doing and, and the goal is on that is to do more now coming up, right? You're really pushing this. <laughs> yeah, we're actually yeah. launching the mill casas the project. And yeah, and, and let's put on, on on screen the website for that because our viewers can help with that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Mil Casas, the project, really it culminates our pastoral training operations and our home building operations. The need for homes is phenomenal. Uh, really, I could build 10,000 houses, but 10,000 homes seems a little ambitious to come and, else can, and ask for help. So we started with 1,000 homes. And the goal is to help families who are living on dirt floor and cornstalk walls scrape off that house and give them a clean, dry, securable place that, mm -hmm. that they're not stressed about when they leave will someone steal what little they have. Yeah. Uh, they're not stressed during rainy season when water runs through their, their, their home. And with the home comes the water filtration system, a high efficiency wood burning stove, a set of bunk beds. And, uh, and, and we're going to be adding a new solar component. I'm really excited about that. So the house functions and it doesn't cost them anything to operate and gives them a bump up to live a health, healthier, happier life. Okay, and, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more about, I want to talk a little bit more about Guatemala too in just a moment. But before we do, we have another piece of video to show. And tell us what this PNC video is. PNC video. This is actually the National Police of Guatemala. Again, last November, uh, last February, excuse me, we were able to launch a Celebrate Recovery training component. And you're looking at 300 men and women from the National Police of Guatemala. And they are in their introductory stages for, the, uh, for learning how to operate a Celebrate Recovery program. And uh, it's an absolute privilege to, me, to work with these men and women. They, they've been branded the most dangerous police and not that they don't have some issues, but I, yeah. I can tell you they are people just like me who they want and they hope for better and they just need some help. They need some focus. And in most cases, they simply haven't been told that, yeah. hey, God loves you. Really, he does? Yeah. And it makes all the difference in the world. Well, when we come back, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more, and, and um, Pastor Bill, you can also add into this since you've traveled as well there. Um, you know, we're seeing all these different ministries, all, all these um, 
uh, outreaches that you're having with the home building and the police force. And Central America can be a dangerous place sometimes, and going into ministry and, and what the need is there. Yes, okay. uh, because many of our viewers may not know much about Guatemala, or may have not traveled there, or some of the surrounding countries, too. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. there's, there's some real challenges. So when God sends you there, uh, you know you have to go with His power and His protection. And we're going to find out more about, about that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Bay Focus, and here's how you can find out more information as well, too. To contact Pastor Michael Watkins of Iglesia Evangelica del Camino Church in La Antigua, Guatemala, please call his ministry office at 727-245-1733 or send an email to mike at iglesiadelcaminogt.com. You can find out more about his work in Guatemala by logging on to www.iglesiadelcaminogt.com. Bay Focus puts the spotlight on Tampa Bay. Join host Darlene Greenlee as she takes a look at the people and events reaching our Central Florida communities with the gospel. Plan to watch Bay Focus Wednesday mornings at 11.30 and Thursday nights at 7 right here on your CTN station. Well, we're back, and, and let's let's talk, um, Pastor Watkins, and I'm going to throw it to you, Pastor Losasso, um, which I know I just mispronounced that, so Losasso, sorry, <laughs> Pastor Bill, <laughs> Bill, we'll call you that, um, but um, th there's a couple of different things I want to do. I, I want to talk a bit more about Guatemala, and then I also want to talk about Pathways, but um, the, the situation down there, what, what are we talking about? We, we hear some war stories about Central America. We hear, we hear people disappearing. We, you know, we, we know that there's issues. So what what yeah. is the ministry climate there? Well, it, to make a general statement, Guatemala is suffering the repercussions of 40 years of civil war. Yeah. And when you get people who just grow up generationally learning to fend for themselves, that changes a, a lot of the way they think. Now, I have seen improvement in my eight years in Guatemala, uh, specifically working with the national police. I've, I've seen officers say, we, no, we will do better. We want to do better. And I know that there's people who want better and they hope for more. Um, is Guatemala safe? Areas are, most of it not. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the simplest way I could say that. Is it dangerous to go down there? Well, you know, the facts are we sponsor and host 600 volunteers from the U.S. Uh, annually that come down and help in our benevolence operations. La Antigua is in the top of the uh, communities, or well, of the country's uh, uh, tourism cities. And it's a very safe place if you just be smart, if you just don't be mm -hmm. crazy. You know, even coming here to the Bay Area, there's things you do and things you don't do. Right. Yeah. What, what's so, what you you've traveled down there too, and and you have a heart for the people. What are some of the things you've seen going down there? Well, on the on the safety factor first, you know the I had hoped we'd have 35 people down there in the church. There are now 35 teams from America going down there. 35 teams wow. a year go down to build the houses, to feed the kids, to do stuff. If it weren't safe in that area, they wouldn't go. We've had as young as six years old. But what I've seen is an amazing move of God in the government. Because of our work with uh, the computer labs that Mike started, we got to meet the president of the country and the U.S. ambassador and the Organization of American States. I mean, God has opened the door uh, unbelievably to do things, and it's still going. So this thousand house project is in addition to yeah. uh, giving a thousand computers to the police, giving away the 25,000 New Testaments. Uh, on and on and on. It's a major work down there. And people can participate. You can bring your teams down from your church as well. 35 are going down every year now. Yeah, and just to say that you have, you're working with government officials, that you've gotten some favor there. And expand, aren't you kind of expanding beyond the borders of La Antigua too, getting it into some surrounding communities? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, La Antigua, if you look at the proper borders of that, it's no more than one square kilometer. Yeah. Um, uh, we actually extend ourselves heavily throughout 
the Ponchoy Valley, and the other word you were probably struggling with was Sacatepeque. Start with an S. Say that fast three times. Say it again. Sacatepeque. I could Sacatepeque. not Sacatepeque. pronounce that. Sacatepeque. I Sacatepeque. tried. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> and uh, no, that, that's actually our department. There's, yeah. uh, you know, the departments work much like the states do, uh, except they're about the size of our counties. Yeah. It's, you know, and if you look at the whole of Gu Gu Guatemala, it's 20,000 square miles smaller than the state of Georgia. So. Well, I think one of the, the things, too, and we've, we've had um, ministries on here that go into Central America, Honduras being one of them, is the children, too. You get a heart for the children. A lot of these children are fending yeah. for themselves. What you do and even the feeding and, and providing homes and things and um, the ministry yeah. you do for children yourself, I mean, it's just it, so needed. Chil the children are the hope and the future of the country. And if, if we can get to them soon enough, yeah. with nutrition so they aren't yeah. stunted in their growth. Uh, nutrition also stunts their capacity for thought process. Uh, and we've seen many children become stunted in hope simply because they don't know it, they haven't seen it, they haven't touched it. Uh, really, the whole deal with building the house is, is we wanna come in, we wanna build a home for them. Give, yeah. give them a bump up, demonstrate the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of the house building project that we hope to do is actually also a pastoral training program. And we're, we plan to come back, not, not just give them keys to a new, new house, but also give them uh, several weeks of life skills training courses and tell them about Jesus specifically. And do you know Jesus specifically? Yeah. And if we can affect the lives of children early enough, Mm -hmm. And part of that is touching the, the families who are stuck. They're stuck yeah. for whatever reason that they're living on dirt floors and corn stock walls. Well, let's, well, let's fix that living situation. Yeah. Yeah. And giving children hope is yeah, a major have, play in what we're doing. You have orphans and street oh. children, and you have children's home, need for children's homes. You have all of that in Central America. I mean, it's really Absolutely. hard to, to see. Okay, I, wanted, I want to um, bring it back a little bit because, uh, again, uh, Pastor Los Sasso, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on today, too, is I want... Um, some of our, possibly our pastors viewing and, and some other ministries to really see the um, partnership of, um, of a, how, what, what a local church can do and, and just go on and do a sister church in another country. And many of them you know, are doing missions work, but you're actually invested in, this is one of your campuses. I love how you say that. Mm -hmm. but back to the main campus here in, mm -hmm. uh, in Largo. Um, I, and you said earlier in the show, and we have some people that maybe hit, weren't there in the beginning. You have a tremendous testimony yourself of where, where God uh, really altered your life at one point and how you came in contact with, with the power of God in your own life. And you have a heart for all, all different types of um, people coming into the church so how what would people if they were looking somebody who's searching for a church which what can you tell them about pathways or some of your service times when are you where they can uh, connect with you we have services Friday night at 7 Saturday night at 6 Sunday morning at 9 and 10 30 Monday night at 7 so a lot of service time some are specifically for alcoholics and addicts and recovery people wonderful service for them on Monday night and anybody can join and the rest of our services are filled with people in ministry. Again, we have ministries to the homeless, ministries to the convicts, ministries to human trafficking victims, yeah. powerful ministries. So we really are a church for hurting people and we'd like to help. That's our whole thing. Okay, you said, you just, you just mentioned something because we've done some things recently on um, Bay Focus and um, in fact talking about, and there's a number, it's like the church is, is becoming really um, conscious of the whole human trafficking issue right now, the Church of Christ as, whole, as a whole. All different denominations, all different people are starting to, to do this mm -hmm. and get involved. And um, um, you mentioned that side of it. When you say you actually, you actually have a targeted ministry for victims, I mean, you actually go seek out, that, that's a little un unusual that one church would have that specifically. Yeah, we lost a girl to human trafficking when she was 11 years old. And it's uh, made us passionate, made us get in on it. What happens now is we work with law enforcement, FBI, Homeland Security, the local agencies. When they make big rescues, and I mean 20 to 27 people, they bring them to our church, and even now smaller ones, because they can't take them to the police station. They clam up, they can't yeah. give their story, so they bring them to us, and we feed them and clothe them and, and take care of business that way. Then the aftercare is incredible. You have to have mentors. They have post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, soldiers going to war, 
get that, but they knew they were going to war. Mm -hmm. They had equipment, they were trained. These girls are being raped 20 times a night, have no idea they were even going to war. They have no mechanism. Uh, Darlene, the other day I was at a 22 year old across from my desk and she was captured when she was 14, rescued when she was 22. She's still 14. Wow. Everything stops, everything is yeah. broken. So we're in the aftercare ministry. With us, this yeah. isn't awareness anymore. Well, churches have to do things. Yeah. Aftercare. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's such a need, and, yeah. and there's such a need, and and thankfully the church is waking up and, and doing some of this, and, and Christians are. So they obviously anybody has a, has a burden for this, they, they can connect with you there too. And I know down the certainly Central America has issues with all of this too and you guys will be involved in all that at, at some point too I mean you, you're doing so many different things all right um, uh, quickly how best can our viewers help help you if the Guatemala work right now well we're working on building 1,000 homes yeah uh, in real quick numbers I need a thousand of my best friends to help me out with forty eight hundred dollars each that covers okay. the cost of the home and the cost to help train pastors that's that's a doable amount that's that's yep. that's that, that, yeah, now 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 if someone says well geez I'm a little short on 4800 okay well yeah. go beyond yourself and offer up what you can yeah, yeah. because any gift will build a part of a wall which will bring relief bring yeah. help bring assistance could, a group of people get together to build Absolutely. one divide that figure up and, and to build a home and and you know that would be that would be great um, okay we're gonna be right back because we're gonna um, talk talk in just a, a moment but first we want to show you how you can find pathways community church because that is also a place you want to visit and if, particularly if you're looking for a church home uh, they're incredible ministry there pastor bill would love to meet you we'll be right back with more of bay focus pathways community church is located at 801 seminole boulevard in largo florida to contact them, please call the church office at 727-397-4707. To find out more about the church, please log on to their website at www.pathwayscc.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the program today, a missions theme telling you what's going on in Guatemala and also here to and Largo with Pathways Community Church. And when I bring programs like this to you, I really am hoping that you will just roll up your sleeves. If all you can do is send a check, uh, that you will pray for these ministries, that you will connect and, and really do something to, to go beyond uh, just what you're doing in your life, because I know I want to do that with mine as well, too. So hope you've enjoyed it today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week on Bay Focus. May God richly bless you.